Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting reflex which is known as doll's eye movement or oculocephalic reflex or vestibulo ocular reflex. So very interesting and exciting reflex. We in our childhood and our children you might have seen they play with a doll. So what happens to the doll's eyes when you shift the doll's head towards the right the eyes goes to the left. When you shift the head to the left the eyes goes to the right. When the head goes up, the eyes comes down and the head goes down, the eyes goes up. This is known as doll's eye phenomenon or oculocephalic response or vestibulo ocular response. This is normally present in human beings. But as we are conscious, we can suppress this reflex. This reflex becomes manifest when you are in comatose state. So the main purpose of this reflex, the doll's eye movement, ocular cephalic reflex or vestibular ocular reflex is to find out the integrity of the brain stem or the frontal cortex, the supratentorial pathway, the frontal cortex or the infratentorial region, the brain stem intactness, the integrity of it when a person is in comatose state. So this is the background. So what is the pathophysiology of this oculocephalic reflex or the doll's eye movement? What happens when I turn my head to left side, I stimulate my labyrinthine apparatus on the left side. So this labyrinth gets stimulated and it elicits a movement. What is the movement elicited by stimulation of the labyrinth example on the left side? It connects with the sixth nerve on the opposite side and the third nerve on the same side. So when my left eye or vestibular or labyrinthine apparatus is stimulated, my eyes will go towards the right side. Right? So when my vestibular or labyrinth is stimulated on one side, example left side, my eyes will move towards the right side. This is the normal reflex. So in doll's eye movement also, when I turn my left head to the left side, my left labyrinth is getting stimulated and my eyes will move towards the right side. When I turn my head to the right side, my labyrinth on the right side will get stimulated and my eyes will move towards the left side because of the lateral rectus on the opposite side and medial rectus on the same side. Okay, this is a normal reflex mechanism. So when we pour hot water, this normal reflex is elicited because we are stimulating the labyrinth. But when we pour hot water, it may damage the tympanic membrane and therefore generally we avoid hot water. We pour cold water to elicit it. Cold water will impair this reflex. There will be hypotonicity of this reflex. The reflex will come down. So it, it interferes with the normal reflex mechanism. So it does the opposite movement. So when you put cold waters, Instead of the eyes moving to the right, the eyes will move towards the left. You got it? So when we pour cold water, we are impairing this normal movement. So instead, in this case left side, instead of eyes moving to the right, the eyes will move to the left side. And there is always a compensation coming from the frontal lobe, frontal eye fields area number 8, which connects to the PPRF on the opposite side and will induce nystagmus. So, normally when I stimulate the left labyrinth, the eyes will go towards the right side. But when my left labyrinth is inhibited by pouring cold water, my eyes will not move to the right side. This labyrinth will overact. Eyes will move to the same side. Frontal eye fields also will have connections with the PPRF on the opposite side. It is trying to push the eyes on the opposite side, the saccadic push, the nystagmus. So, it causes nystagmus. So, in cold calorics, eyes will move toward the same side and nystagmus will be on the opposite side. Cold opposite. If you put warm water, you are stimulating the reflex and it will be the same thing. Cows, cold opposite, 
warm warm same side warm opposite so cow c o w s so if you put cold water the nystagmus will be on the opposite side if you put warm water the nystagmus will be to the same side so just to understand the pathways so you have a semicircular canals when you stimulate the left side it will connect through the eighth nerve the pprf the sixth nerve on the opposite side and the third nerve on the same side so when my left labyrinth is stimulated my eyes will move to the right side we have frontal eye fields area number 8 also coming from the left side in this case and coming to the pprf it stimulates the right lateral rectus and through mlf the medial rectus so the action of the frontal eye fields area number 8 example on the left side is to stimulate the eyes to the right side the action of the labyrinth also is to stimulate the eyes to move to the opposite side so when you put cold water the eyes will not move to the right side it will come to the same side and the front life fields will try to push the eyes to the opposite side and therefore the nystagmus will be on the opposite side so cold if you put the nystagmus will be on the opposite side if you put warm water or normal the nystagmus will be on the same side cause okay right but with this pathology with this pathology with this pathways two things can be can be confirmed one if the eyes do not move for example if my if i put cold water on the left side i should come to the same side but if the eyes do not come to the same side if the movement horizontal movement is affected that means it is intratemporal pathology the third fourth and sixth nerve connections are affected but if i put cold water eyes that comes to the same side but if there's no nystagmus that means frontal eye fields area number 8 is affected that means it is a supratemporal pathology metabolic encephalopathy hyponatremia hypoxemia whatever may be the reason must have affected the frontal lobe and therefore the nystagmus is absent so if the eye movement is absent it is an intratemporal pathology brain stem pathology if the compensatory nystagmus is absent it is a supratemporal pathology frontal lobe is affected be it metabolic encephalopathy hypoxemia or hyponatremia but with this pathway i can explain another fascinating concept frontal infarct lesion and pontine lesion as i said the frontal eye fields also connects to the pprf on the opposite side so pprf stimulates the right side and through mlf left side so if my left frontal cortex is stimulated my eyes will move towards the right side from the frontal cortex corticospinal tract descends at the level of the medial oblongated crosses and goes to the opposite side so there's a frontal lobe infarct eyes cannot move to the opposite side eyes will move to the same side and the corticospinal tract coming from the frontal lobe will come and cross over to the opposite side so eyes will be looking to the same side and hemiplegia will be on the opposite side whereas if it is a pontine lesion it will not it cannot pull the eyes ipsilaterally so eyes will move towards the opposite side hemiplegia also will be on the opposite side because the tract crosses at the level of the medial oblongata so hemiplegia also will be on the opposite side so eye is looking towards the same side of hemiplegia as a pontine lesion eye is looking to one side and hemiplegia on the opposite side is a frontal lobe lesion so with this pathway you can place the lesion whether it's a frontal lobe or whether it's a whether it's a pontine lesion and second in cold calorics will help to find out whether it's an intratemporal brain stem pathology where the eye movement is affected or a supratemporal pathology where the frontal eye fields get affected because of hypoxemia or hyponatremia or any metabolic pathology so with this simple reflex you can get so many useful information and informative points so it was a very interesting lecture i enjoyed giving uh, giving this lecture i hope you also enjoy it if you have liked it please like and subscribe my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my facebook page fp page dr sinwas concepts bye thank you